celebrating 10 years of award-winning car talk. It's the In Wheel Time Car Show. Just ahead, we talk with John Gray with Gulf Coast Auto Shield and get a tour of the new shop. Woo! Mr. Mars reviews the 2021 Mercedes-Benz GLB, as in boy, 250, new model. Conrad has the events calendar, and later we talk with the Mopar guy about new Wrangler and Gladiator parts. Plus, we'll have this week's automotive news headlines. That and more just ahead on today's In Wheel Time Car Show. Howdy. Along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong, Jeffrey, we need more Jeffrey Zeke. We do. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us on this Saturday. Thanks so much. It's going to be a hot one, and it's going to be a hot one here in the studio. I can tell already. Oh, yeah. How I've hot take, is I've it? taken my nap, and I'm ready to go. Oh, my. Your nap. So the, the, the uh, Simone Biles story. Let's no, just no, go no, ahead no, and start no, with no, that. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not. Let's not, let's not. We had 30 no, minutes of Simone but, earlier. Uh, rest in peace, Dusty Hill. Yes. Yeah, that's I true. Mean, what a what an icon of music, and I, I'm hoping they show a number of real good documentaries of ZZ Top, the who they are, what they are behind the scenes uh, of some of the videos. Well, there's a great documentary there on is. Netflix yeah. that uh, was done. I don't know in the past year or so. Oh, really? Yeah, well, see, and it's good. Net, yeah, Netflix or anything. It was yeah. done just before Corona. Yeah, before the okay. shutdown. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need to get on and see it. Yeah, you do. It's it's really good, and it uh, it really kind of tells the story. Did you ever see ZZ Top? I certainly did. Where I, at? Uh, actually, at the let's see, was it called the Summit or the Compacts? I don't know whatever it was called down there. Where Joel takes up the space. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Any one of those things. Did you ever see him? Saw him I, at the I, rodeo. I saw him twice at the the Beaumont Civic Center. So I mean, less than eight thousand people, so you can get a type. But I also used to go see them. When I before when they were the moving sidewalks just before they changed oh, the name, cool. they used to play in the groves at the teenage the teen house before they had called. beards. Before they and had uh, yeah, they they weren't old enough to have beards back then. And then whenever they started uh, when they changed their name and Al Caldwell put them on the radio, they used to play at the BFW Hall in Beaumont out there on Highway 90. I'll be darned. And uh, you know you just go out there. They were just another band. So you, you saw them in the, the, the beginning. Dancing. Yes, and they opened for Jimi Hendrix. Did you ever see him, Jeffrey? No, sir, I did not. Actually, I, I saw them when it. they were the 13th floor elevators at the uh, Astral Hall. Really? Yep. Was it the elevators? They had the some sidewalk? big, huge teenage thing out there. I don't remember what they called it, but, uh, you know, vendors and bands and all that stuff inside Astral Hall. And I went to that and saw them there. I saw them when they opened for the Rolling Stones in the Astrodome. Wow. And, and had to be October of 81. Could you move your mic a little bit closer, please? Like October of 81. You, when they you, opened, like we can't hear bro- him. You broadcasters, you know, uh, yep. you got to lead you guys in. Hey, I learned from last week. I drove all the way down from Oklahoma City to see that concert. Did you? Yep. Yeah. Cool. So you, you saw them and the Rolling Stones. How do you remember that? I got a little. That's a good question. <laughs> Yeah, because those brain cells were burnt out a long time ago. He has it written on the dashboard of his Oldsmobile. His address to drive home. The well, one that doesn't run. Right there well, by. well, let's ask John. John, did you ever see the Rolling – or uh, did you ever see ZZ Top? About five times. Oh, okay. Where at? About, uh, Toyota Center, uh, compact, uh, the, the compact Center. Oh, wow. I, the last last two times I saw him, we were at Smart Financial. Um I was a big, I was a big, big fan, and I tell you what, I if I, you heard about death pools before? People put money on people who who I've are going to die that. that year. I have heard of that. I have. Man, I never would have thought it would have been him. Yeah. Oh, you the know? first. Yeah, I thought you know, beard maybe. Yeah. They, see, I said that this morning. You would think it would be a, a different uh, person. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, yeah, it, I think I, what I a read, lost. I read, read somewhere that uh, apparently he had some sort of hip surgery or something yeah. here in the past uh, six months know. or so. It was a shock to me. And he, he really didn't uh, apparently recover from that or something it went haywire. Yep. And to die in your sleep at home, apparently he wasn't doing well and they moved him home. I don't know. But uh, yeah, what a, what a tragic loss and a Texas icon. Yep. Yeah. John, what do you think yeah. of Simone Biles? No, let's yeah. not go oh, no. there. We're not going to talk about that. We don't need to pull Don's I, uh, I had a, a friend of mine had a knee surgery, yeah. and uh, he had the second one done really quick. And uh, he he's he's on disability now. His you know you talk about bringing in dementia, a lot of things going under anesthesia twice. So 
for Dusty Hill, there may have been something related to yeah, something like it, that. It, it would probably come out sooner or later that some weird thing yeah. went on. I had a paper cut the other day. <laughs> John Gray, we're going to move along here now, and we're going to talk about Gulf Coast Auto Shield, if that's okay with you. I already notice a huge difference in the office setting oh, yeah. Look at because that. you've got a view out of an actual window. But we also notice that the booze all is the right behind All the whiskey the over back. your shoulder, the priorities. Mm. Yes. So the priorities are in order. That's correct. The priorities are in order. <laughs> and, uh, kind of sums it it's up. A, it's a nice... It's, I tell you, it's a nicer, it's a much nicer place. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a much nicer uh, experience for the client too. I'll take you up to the, uh, up to the waiting area. Um, but yeah, it turned out uh, we had had a little bit of a rough start getting in, and uh, one of the big, uh, like there's a 15 ton air conditioner on the roof. Well, it, it didn't work when we moved in, uh, so it was a little warm. Wow. Uh, and then there was some plumbing issues. They had to come in after we put our floor down. They had to come in and dig it up and, and get that fixed. Um, but things have kind of settled down. And, and um, uh, the, the workflow here, it's it's not that much bigger than the last one. It is about, uh, I don't know, 1,200 to 1,600 square feet larger. But we actually have a ton of places to park out back. So well, that was um, always a little bit of the shortcoming of the old place. Is all your parking man, was, was out front? And there was like ten spaces max. It was tough. So I, I would say the, the the best two things or best three things about this facility uh, are going to be the, our our ability to park, which is which is better for our workflow, uh, the lighting in the new place, and uh, just the the waiting area for the clients. Well, let's start where and, where uh, you're located now. Is as in relationship to the old place? How far away is it? We're about three miles from the old place. Oh. We're just if you if you get on the Beltway, if you get 59 from the old place. You take 59 south, get on the Beltway going south, immediately exit, and we're in that uh, industrial complex right there, right on uh, it's 11275 South Sam Houston Parkway West, Suite 100, and uh, we're we're really really close. So this is a, this is one of those new warehouses that they've built along there. No, this one's been around for a long time, actually. But um, an industrial park. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it was. It used to be a furniture store, I think, is what it was oh. uh, in its prior life. Interesting. So you got big signage yeah. out there, and, and uh, driving by, people say, I, "I know where that place is." I don't. We got a flagpole though, and we haven't done anything with it. But man, that raises all kinds of possibilities. Yes, That's raise the we, flag. What we might, what we might run up that pole. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind, knowing you, that there'll be something run up the pole. There you go. Well, you know, you take a wrap, take a wrap off an old car, put a new wrap on it, fly the old wrap. There you go. No. And so everybody, it's kind of cool though. Everybody from the the the, the center here sees some of the cars coming in, so they've come down to visit. Well, down the corner, this is really great, and I'll show you what makes it so great. You know, we do the we do the built-in radar detector laser diffusers. Yeah, and yep. uh, so down down in the corner is a company that used to be called Coban. Now it's called Safe Fleet. What they do is they put uh, video recording devices in in uh, in police cars. Uh -huh. And they used to be a little they used to be a little bit more uh, they used to do a little bit more work when they were, were when they were Coban, but they've kind of gotten out of some of the other stuff. Well, the owner comes down and she's got a nine eleven. She wants to get some work done to her car. And I went and visited, and one of the toughest things when you do built-in radar detector laser diffusers is you just don't have access to a laser gun. It's just very, they're very <laughs> difficult. I do have a, I do have a, a constable uh, that will come over I with a laser gun going. and let us test stuff. It's kind of cool, but you never, you never get to keep it or anything. Well, I asked, do you have any laser guns? Oh. Uh. Well, sure we do. We have some stalkers. So she could pulls out this. This is a dragon eye. This is the most difficult gun to jam in the world. And uh, we've got one now. And uh, <laughs> what are the chances of that? Man, that is, it is a cool piece of equipment. And so we can test our stuff for clients now to show them that this will indeed jam the dragon eye guns because they're the newest thing on the market. And uh, they're very, very difficult to defeat. So when are you going to merge with that company? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? So um, you have it, tested the Dragon Eye on your on your product? 
Oh yeah, we did first <laughs> within five five minutes of getting it back because we had a uh, actually had two uh, two cars in here with the with the uh, new ALP anti laser priority Redenzo setup uh, that uh, that has the capability of jamming uh, the newest stuff and, on the and market. He, so, he is on the Beltway. Yep. Yeah. So when you put the wrap on this this uh, radar jamming wrap. How much of the car do you actually wrap with it? Well, it's not actually a wrap. Uh, it, it is uh, it's it's sensors that go up front, and they're they're very very small, and um, they actually take the light that the laser gun is shooting, and it will it'll send back a signal blocking it, and um, uh, and then it'll shut itself off so that you have a chance to slow down or check your speed or whatnot. Uh, I run them, but I don't, you know, I'm not a big speeder, but I do run them in my, in my cars just because I like to be aware of what's going on around me. And, and um, research. Testify. I call that research. Yeah. And when it, it is real, when, of course it's research. When the system <laughs> recognizes that you're in a radar situation, does it advise you as the driver? Oh yeah. Well, radar is easy. Radar is easy, and it will not jam radar. Nothing's gonna ra gonna uh, gonna jam radar because radar is 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 actually radar waves that take and measure measure your speed. Laser is the tough one because laser is line of sight only because it is a it is light, it is light that's being shot onto your car, and it, you, they get a reflection back, and that's what uh, that's why when you come over a hill, if you have a radar detector in your car, that's not a jammer. But it will tell you when you're being shot. You'll notice you get no prior warning. That's what's, that, you know. That's why people want laser jammers because you don't get it. You don't get a. You don't get a second chance. Hmm. Once you come over the hill, you see the guy standing outside with the gun, uh, shooting at your car. Um, that's it. You're caught. So, but it does advise you when it sees the the light. Um, oh, absolutely. And it starts jamming. Once it, start, <clears throat> once it starts jamming. It will tell you. It will tell you. But it, does it and beep? Then you need to obviously check your speed or, or slow down uh, because they are going to get a second reading on you because the system's going to shut itself off because you don't want to continue jamming laser guns. Uh, it's just not something you want to do. That you know, technically they're illegal, um, but uh, uh, so you know, can, they're very very popular and they're extremely effective. When you're when you're testing it. Can you see in mm -hmm. the in the device you're shooting the car with? Can you see mm -hmm. that it's being jammed? You're not getting a reading back is the problem. Okay, okay. So yeah, that's now this one yeah. of all the of all the of all the laser guns that I've tested with, this one is the one that gets. I mean, I I kind of stood on the sidewalk here, uh, out on the Beltway, and I was shooting cars as they were going by from, you know, three four hundred <laughs> feet. And it was like this thing was dead on. And every they were all time. pulling it never over. Messed up. <laughs> it was never messing up. You know, it was just perfect. Um, uh, but on some of the other older equipment that I've tried this stuff with, uh, you would get errors. You know, quite frequently. So, the thing about the Dragon Eye guns are though they don't have them. You don't see them in Houston. You don't see them. Nobody in no, none of the departments in Texas have them, uh, to my knowledge, as of the last time I checked the forum. So what happens? So. Uh, what, what what happens if you know you do get shot with a laser and you have one of these devices, and the police officer pulls you over anyways, uh, because they know well, something's a little hanky. A, you it, could get a you could get a class you could get a a, a ticket for having a, a a jamming device on your car. Uh, that's about as far as it goes. I've had clients that every once in a while you'll get caught with a with a jammer. It is extremely rare. Um, uh, but it's just a chance you're going to take. It's it, the ticket's less than a speeding ticket's going to be, and it probably you doesn't know, go so. on your license. Yeah, not only that, these jammers that we put on too have uh, they they double they double their capability as parking sensors as well. So, so that's I'm putting I, a, that's probably, I'm putting a parking that's sensor. That's probably where on my I car. would start. That'd be my first defense. <laughs> so I've got because curb feelers look silly. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a I've got a, a a performance car, and I want to put one of these on there. What versus like a, a 86 Buick that I want to put one on. What does it cost to put one of these things in? Uh, they started about 3000 Okay. 3000 for front and rear radar with front laser jammers. You can get laser jammers on the back, too. 
you very seldom do you get hit from the back with laser. Number one, the, the officer has to be stationary. They cannot be moving. Uh, typically what happens with uh, when you get hit from the back is the, the officer is, is up on top of an overpass and he is shooting down toward the freeway. And look, if, if I get hit like that and I get I get and I'm speeding at the time, um, I just say, I, hey, I accept it. You got me. You know, but it, it just doesn't happen all that often. So, so, look, I, I would love to continue this radar jamming thing, but we want a tour of the new shop. All right. And, and while you're going to the tour of the new shop, let me ask one more radar jamming thing. Oh boy. With the technology in today's vehicles that have these automated braking systems in them, is mm-hmm. can that be integrated into the radar jamming? No, sir. Okay. No, I, sir. You nice don't, you thought, don't. but... Because it'd give you that that couple of tenths or a second or so quicker tap of the brake. Ooh, look at that! Is that the new waiting room? Ooh. Yeah. So that's the new waiting room. Oh, Man, that's and, sweet. Uh, it turned out really good, and uh, that desk right there is now occupied by my daughter, who just uh, the one that just graduated from A and M. So she's going to come to work for me for for a good long while for Great. a while, and Great. we will. Uh, yeah, it's cool. So she's going to pay so you back for a- her education. That's right. <laughs> I don't think she can ever pay me back for that. That was that was something. Um, so we had this uh, race uh, race deck put down in the shop, nice. and it looks kind of looks kind of cool. And so this is the uh, this is the new facility. Wow! And it's got windows up front. It's got some windows right over here. Yep. Very on nice. The side, and um, at, against that wall over there is where we we have uh, we can put six cars against that wall and work on them all at the same time. Paint protection film and uh, window tent. Lots of light there. Yeah, lots of lots of fluorescent yeah. light, which yeah, I know yeah. you need for doing lots of your light paint over there. Yeah. And uh, so is all those... over here. We'll we'll uh, over in this corner. We'll do ceramic coatings and little various various things that. Uh, that we do to do to cars, maybe do a little bit of uh, vinyl wrap, uh, some color change stuff, and um, that's the Mercedes right there that's got uh, that nice. set of jammers on the Sweet. front of it. That's kind of cool. But yeah, that 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 E that GT sixty three S is a, a neat car. Um, and then back here, of course, we now we have a big uh, storage area over here in the back um, through that door right there with a Lamborghini um, SUV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Urus. It's a Urus. It's a cool car. Um, then back here, we do the kind of the dirty work goes on oh, back here. Oh, we, we go. You know, if we need to polish cars or whatnot, we're doing them to where it's not in the area of the paint protection film and window tank because obviously you don't want any kind of right. contamination going on. And then the very, very back back there, that's where uh, that's where the electronic installs and whatnot are going down. The secret stuff. Um, then in the back, we've got a uh, I got a twenty by twenty five carport coming. For, and that's taken a while to build, as you can imagine, with everything that's going on. Sure. Um, but uh, that'll be where we'll do in our, our training, customer training for, uh, you know, taking care of the paint on their cars and oh, neat. things of that nature. You know, the last time and, uh, I talked to you, you had mentioned something about the fact that uh, you wanted to get, you, get a new cell phone to me or uh, uh, office phone or something. Do you have that number now? I do. What I is do. it? I'll what is that- it? Let me, let me, I'll, let me walk up there and I'll give it to you in just a second. This is a clean C5 right here. I mean, this apparently this white C5, C5, Z06 is very, very rare. It, Maybe extremely rare, less than a couple of hundred of them ever made. Uh, is wow, it, is it as is, clean as mine? It's pretty darn clean. Yeah. Well, yeah that, the, it's the, pretty so darn clean. Is it because and, of the and, white? And got, yeah, because of the white. They only made, and they, they made it for less than a full model. I'm going to say less than a half a model year. Uh, for that one year, and that was the only time a white Z06 was offered wow. in the C5 chassis. I'll be darned. Wow. Hey, well, you got a lot of cars in there, John. Yeah, what is the percentage of customer cars versus dealership cars that you have? We're pretty high on, on customer cars. Uh, the dealerships are, it, it's good to have a, it's good to have a couple of dealership accounts, but you can't put your eggs in that basket because of the fact that um, they are, not consistent. Hey, let me turn this. Turn this. Game. Yeah, you never know what what might happen. There may be a manager a, change, a turnover right. in management, um, budgets. Yeah, things of that nature. And, it, and the, if you if you if you rely too much on the dealerships, 
in in this line of work, it can it could put you out of business. Yeah, yep. interesting. So, um, luckily, we have a, a very strong retail presence. Good client um, base, and you also have a yep. huge relationship with the Tesla community because you've always got two or three, four Teslas in the shop. So I'm, I'm I tell at- you, Tesla and Porsche are 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 really really big for us. And they've done us. Uh, they've really done us very well. The new number to the shop is eight three two nine three zero five six five five, and my daughter Sophie handles that phone now, and uh, she will uh, take your call and answer your questions. And uh, if there's a question that she can't answer, if you want to talk to me, she will get get you through to me, uh, get me a message or whatnot, and I'll give you a call back. Um, but the phone calls were just getting to the point to where I could, I just wasn't able to get any, you know, get any work done. All right. So, too busy on the phone. Um, I, I have two yeah. questions. One, are, have yes, your sir. hours changed? Are, what are your hours? And also, what is no. your, what does your staff think of the new facility? Are they all pumped up? Staff likes, yeah, the staff likes the new facility a lot. Um, it's just so much of a, the, the lighting and how much cleaner this place is. Uh, and, and look, the other, other building was perfect uh at the time you know it really served us well over those four years it was just uh yeah we it. needed uh we we outgrew it and we just we needed something better uh to continue to produce the results that we that we want to pro- you know that we want to produce so, john what's the uh, uh what's the address over there 11275 south sam houston parkway west suite 100 77031 we're right down the that. i can't write that fast <laughs> Right down the way from Pickup USA. Sweet 100 a, what? Sweet 100. And the zip is 77031 over here. Okay. okay. Well, listen, man, it's uh, it's been great to talk to you, and congratulations on the new facility. Uh, and, uh, it I've really got, looks I'm, good. I'm going to try to stop by there maybe one day this next week in the morning just to stop in and see it in, in person and that sort of stuff. And I know that our listeners would love to stop by and see it as well. So I guess we will kind of open invitation to stop by if you get a chance. Oh, take, take any, a tour. anytime. And, Don, you'll get a kick out of the fact that the reason why that white car, that white C5 is here so we could take off the, the, the side trim pieces that you want to take off of yours. I swear to God. You're kidding. I yeah. swear to God that's why it's here. Well, oh, wow. Uh, hey, hey, you, and you did a great job on mine with that as well. Trendsetter. Well, John, it's, it's great to talk to you. Thanks so much. Congratulations, my friend, and we'll see you soon. Take care, guys. Thank you all very much. You Thank you, John. Yep. Hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us here, uh, shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. Calm. Yep. I'm so glad he moved to a bigger shop. Holy cow! He, well, it just it, it just he was so he's crowded moved to where a different was. level with yeah. all the flooring, and it just looks so much yeah. cleaner and neater. That's, that's Time cool. now for the events calendar. Conrad uh, has a look at uh, what's coming up. Well, again tonight, Nifty Fifties up at Grogan's Mill in the Woodlands, the Kima Car Meet uh, down in Kima. Um, tomorrow is Coffee, Cars, and Donuts. At the Whitehall Cafe in Navasota. And it's coffee and uh, chrome tomorrow as well. Coffee and chrome wait. at Sharpstown Golf Club. Uh-huh, the, where Prince's Hamburgers Prince's is located. Hamburgers. Yep, it's the only Prince's left, isn't yep, it? Yep, 9 to noon tomorrow. So I'll, gonna? I'm, gonna, I'm planning on going, yeah. So Don will be there with hero cards and signing autographs. <laughs> Jeff will probably be carrying his bags for him. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going. And then uh, <laughs> next uh, next Sunday is uh, uh, HPD Twin Meet, Twin Peaks meet in Webster. Um, so if you're if you're living in the southeast side of town and you want to go to a pretty cool meet, uh, they always have some real nice uh, real nice iron show up. And then uh, Speed Advocates on Thursday, August twelfth uh, at nine p.m. at Rudy's Barbecue and Tumble. All right, perfect. Thank you, sir. Time now for this hour's car review. Mr. Mars has a look at the 2021 Mercedes-Benz GLB. This is the new model. This is the new model, and it's kind of, um, they kind of parked it in between the subcompact and a compact. You know, it doesn't really fit into <clears> both of them. It's a little big for one, a little small for the other one. Huh. If I had to put anything to it, I would say it is a compact because I, I just think that that's where it fits better as far as class. No, it's goes. small. It is small. But it really is not as small as a subcompact to me. And, and when you look at it, it's got a nice big boxy look to it. You know, it's got straight lines there that you can kind of see in the picture there. And, and it it's kind of gives it a little more off-road character. 
which is not really an off-road vehicle, but it also takes it out of that luxury class as well. But the reason they did, I think that they did this because this thing's got a lot of AMG touches. It's not an AMG, I figured out, but it's got a lot of AMG touches, you know, along the, uh, the body lines and some of the touches that we're going to talk about as we go through this. Um, it's got LED headlights, taillights, got all those LED lighting packages, got rain sensing wipers, all the things you're going to expect from a Mercedes. Got a power side folding mirrors, got a power lift gate. Now, the factory, it comes with 18 inch wheels, but we had the optional AMG 20 inch they spoke look, wheels. They look great. Those they really look really look nice. nice. Run flats that you don't notice are run flats. They've gotten so much better. I don't mind run flats anymore. Hmm. Now, when you get to the interior, and we had some uh, leather seating surfaces. The front seats were heated. The uh, rear seats were folding, reclining. They actually slide. They'll actually move six inches so you can adjust that in the leg rear. room in the rear. It's, oh, wow. And so uh, because uh, if you push the front seats back, which got, you know, somebody, Don's height, got plenty of leg room, I believe. And uh, you, then you can push look. the back seats back as well to kind of make up for it. Now, I will say this. Vehicle has an optional third row seat available. Yeah. We didn't have it. And I thought that was the smartest thing that, that you could do in a vehicle this size. Don't put the third row yeah. in it. Yeah. But if you really got to have it, it's there. We had the uh, optional AMG steering wheel. We had optional AMG floor mat. So there's a lot of AMG touches into this. I like the air vents. Yes. The yes. Air the vents air vents are cool. nice and big. You know, you want to reach up there and grab them. Uh, it had a 10.75-inch center monitor, so it had plenty of screen where you can sit there and, and deal with that. Here's a picture of the rear cargo area. Again, to me, that's where you want to be instead of trying to cram a third row in there. 10.75-digital uh, instrument display, cargo cover, all those good things. Now, you get into the engine right here. you got a 2.0 inline four-cylinder turbo, 221 horsepower, 238 pound-feet of torque. With an eight-speed transmission, dual-clutch transmission, the DCT cool. that we talked Thanks, about man. last week. This little car is peppy. This little car will skit and get if whenever you want it to. Now, the EPA says you should be looking for about 23 in the city, 30 on the highway, 26 combined. I got 25 for the week that I had it, and it was really a lot of fun to drive around. Ample power. It's got more fun uh, than what you really need look for in a vehicle like that. The, um, it does have paddle shifters if you want to play with them. It's got enough pep that kind of make you want to play with that a little bit. It's tuned and tweaked by AMG. So they've gone in and touched the transmission and the engine power. Zero to 60 in 5.1 seconds, according to Mercedes-Benz. Uh, and it also has an off-road engineering package. Now, what this does is it takes the, the torque distribution and changes it. If you go into that mode from an 80-20 to a 50-50, and uh, they also ties into the ABS so that they use the ABS for that off-road enhancement, Stability. if you will. Yeah. So if you're looking for something to compare it to, you might look at an Audi Q3, a BMW X1, or even a VW Tiguan. Now, base 2021 GLB all-wheel drive starts at $40,050. Now, our particular vehicle... Uh, MSRP as tested with a couple of little options on it was forty nine thousand seven fifty five. And in that category, with that kind of luxury type vehicle and the touches, I thought it was a pretty good package. Sub fifty for a Mercedes. And I enjoyed driving this vehicle. I really did. Cool. Hey, the In Wheel Time Car Show streams on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and uh, InWheelTime.com. Podcast available. It's your favorite podcast provider. In Wheel Time Car Show continues right after this quick break. Let me tell you about a locally owned and operated group of dealerships called Bayway. Bayway owner Daryl Wisniewski is born and raised right here, and he knows Houstonians better than anyone. Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, Bayway Lincoln and Bayway Chevrolet are managed by Lincoln Stahl. And when you get to know these guys, you'll want to become part of the Bayway family too. Feel good that you're part of Houstonian-owned Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram.com, Bayway Chevrolet.com, and Bayway Lincoln.com. Remember the name, Bayway. Tailpipes and Tacos, Houston's premier monthly car cruise-in returns Saturday, August 21st at two Loopy Tortilla Mexican restaurants in Katy and inside the Loop on the Southwest Freeway near Kirby. Tailpipes and Tacos is free and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods at two locations. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard just south of I-10 and Katy and inside the Loop on the Southwest Freeway near Kirby. 
Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in. Tailpipes and tacos at Loopy's inside the loop on the Southwest Freeway in Kirby and in Katy on the Grand Parkway just south of I-10 where you'll see the In Real Time Car Show. Get your ride ready and we'll see you at the Tailpipes and Tacos Saturday morning cruise in at Loopy's in Katy and Kirby. August 21st, 8 to 11 a.m., weather permitting. You see all the new ceramic car wash cleaners on TV now, but John Gray at Gulf Coast Auto Shield has been using ceramic coatings on Houston's most expensive cars for years, and he'll tell you that nothing beats the real thing. Gulf Coast Auto Shield installs a coating over your paint that actually comes with a warranty. If you just picked up your Lambo, your Aston Martin, Porsche, Ferrari, any other exotic car, chances are your car will have company that have already found Gulf Coast Auto Shield. Now, you don't have to own an exotic. Maybe you got a truck, an SUV, or even an older vehicle that needs a little love. Well, let John Gray give it a look and give you an estimate on refurbishing that paint and making your vehicle look new again. How about getting a gift certificate for the wife's birthday or anniversary from Gulf Coast Auto Shield and tell her, honey, I know you love your car, so why don't we get it looking new again? It'll be the best gift ever, one that she'll never forget. Get hold of John Gray at gcautoshield.com or give him a call, 832-264-0670. Gulf Coast Auto Shield. 